Hi there, it's Joan. Welcome to Joan's Kitchen. Today in my kitchen I'm going to be preparing a French onion soup casserole. I'm actually not going to be preparing it. I prepared it already, but I'm going to show you a technique for preparing the onions for it and talk about the dish a little bit and what the history of the dish is. And I'm focusing on a French dish today because I am going to be hosting a river cruise in France. It's going to start at the end of March in 2022. And the uh, cruise company until September 30th is offering a nice discount per person. So if you're interested in sailing on the Rhone River and the Sand River in Burgundy and Provence with me and Rich in spring of 2022, please let me know. You can reach me at joan at tastefulvoyages.com. And while I'm preparing this, if anybody has any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Even if you're watching the recording, just drop your question in the comment box and I will get back to you with an answer. So French onion soup is actually a really old recipe. They think that onion soup went back to the Roman times and it was really a peasant food. Onions were easy to grow and cheap and plentiful. And a lot of soups in those days also had bread in them. A traditional French onion soup is a broth that's usually made with some kind of a meat stock there might be a little uh, wine to flavor the stock. It has onions in it that are cooked very slowly on top of the stove until they're caramelized, which means that some of the natural sugars come out in the onions and they get a nice deep brown coloring to them. So after the onions are caramelized, we add the stock to the onion soup and a little bit of flour for thickening it. And then at the very end, you float a piece of bread on top, which was called a crouton. And put a little bit of cheese on top of that and either run it under the broiler or um, flame it, which is called brûléeing it. So that's a traditional French onion soup. This particular recipe is from a chef named Anthony Michael Contrino, and he's actually a food stylist for the Today Show now. Rich and I met him several years ago at an event that was up in Beverly Hills, um, a cooking thing, another cook who I follow who actually just recently moved back to Tuscany. Um, this other guy, he and his wife had a cooking show that was called Extra Virgin, and it was all about Tuscan cooking. And anyway, Anthony was helping him at this event with preparing the food, food styling, and he was also photographing it. And I've followed Anthony ever since, and this is one of the recipes from his blog. And he's talked about his love of onion soup, and that whenever it's on a menu, he has to try it to see what it is. This particular recipe has the flavor of onion soup. It comes together a little bit more quickly and you can either do it as a casserole that would be served family style, or you can do it in an individual cooking dish, which is what I've done here today. So to make this onion soup Anthony style, you need onions, and I do have an onion that I've cut here. I'm gonna show some cutting about that. This one calls for beef stock, and I'm using beef bouillon cubes, which is perfectly acceptable, although you can certainly use um, you know, can or a box of beef stock that you have in the store, or if you have homemade, that's that's good too. The onions, when they're sauteed or when they're caramelized, they're cooked in butter and a little bit of olive oil. Um, the, they cook in the butter first and then the olive oil is added later. There's a tiny bit of flour that's added to the mixture to thicken it up a little bit before adding the beef stock. And this particular um, recipe also has a touch of white wine. Sometimes the recipes will have white wine and red wine. Sometimes they only have red wine. And then some of them are also finished off with a little bit of cognac or something like that. Rich asked me to talk today about the difference between cooking wine and cooking with regular wine. And cooking wine is a product that you really don't want to use. It's better to use real wine. And the rule of thumb is to cook with wine that you would drink. Cooking wine is, first of all, started with poor quality wine, and then there's a lot of salt that's added to it and other preservatives so that it's shelf stable. And it just doesn't taste as good. And honestly, you don't have to get like a big, fancy, expensive bottle of wine to cook with. Just cook with something that you would, uh, that you would drink. And for the white wine for this, I'm using an Italian wine. This is a Pinot Grigio from Venice. I think this bottle probably cost eight or nine dollars. And it just, it just has a little bit of wine in there. When I'm cooking with wine like this that I'm not gonna drink right away, I do have a little vacuum seal thing like this and I cover that up. So the other thing that is in this particular recipe is croutons. And I mentioned that the piece of bread that was floated on top of the onion soup in the traditional French onion soup recipe was called a crouton. Um, this is one of Anthony's hacks, which I think is really genius. Instead of 
you know, getting French bread and toasting it and putting olive oil and rubbing garlic on it, this is a nice shortcut to use actual croutons that you would use on a salad that you buy from the store that are already flavored. So these that I used are flavored with Parmesan and garlic. And then for the cheese, I've already grated the cheese, but the cheese is Gruyere. Gruyere is a classic Swiss style cheese. And actually when you're having fondue, the traditional cheeses for fondue are Gruyere and Emmentaler. Gruyere has a beautiful, rich, kind of nutty flavor. It's a very melty cheese, and it, it also tastes really good when it's brown, which is the effect that we are going for with the French onion soup. So I'm gonna move these things out of the way, and what I wanted to do today was to do a little demonstration of how to cut the onion for the French onion soup. And so this is actually gonna be a little bit like a knife skills class today. Um, and I did take a knife skills class at Sur La Table several years ago, and actually that's where this knife came from. That was the bonus for taking the class. So typically you start with an onion. You wanna cut off not the root end, because the root end um, is where all the sulfur is, and that's the part that makes you cry. So typically you wanna cut off the bottom, so that's gonna be where it's just pointy and the leaves are kinda of coming to the point. So you cut that part first so that you can set your onion down flat and then you cut it in half, and when you do that, it's easier to peel. I've already gone ahead and peeled this. Now this is the part where you need to be really careful not to cut yourself, but you're gonna take your knife and you're gonna hold onto the top of the onion and just kind of slice through like this. Now the cut that I'm gonna show you right now is how you would cut the onions for an onion soup. The recipe calls for julienne, and if you think about when you have onion soup, it's not rings of onions, it's, it's like long, strands of onions which is called a julienne cut so after you've sliced through it like this then you're going to take your knife and you're going to do some narrow cuts up along the top like this and i'm going to show you the magical part in just a minute turn your onion around and just cut off the top part and again this top part the root end is where all the sulfur is, and I'm not crying at all because I haven't gotten into this part where all that um, vapor would be released. So the way that I've cut it, look at this, I have my nice slices of onion that are ready to get sauteed for the onion soup. Now, if you wanted to have chopped onions or diced onions, the technique for doing so is very similar. Now, just get a plate to put these on. So to julienne the onions, I slice through it first lengthwise like this. And then I slice through the top like this. But if I want to dice or chop the onions, there's actually an extra step so I've got them cut like this, I've got them cut like that. So now what I'm gonna do is just cut through them and voila, there are our diced onions. One of the interesting things I learned about this onion soup is that there's a theory that the word restaurant actually comes from onion soup. In France, the onion soup that we know today was developed in the court of King Louis XV and it was a, a famous chef that prepared the soup for him and they believed that the soup had restorative powers. And the word in French for restore is very close to restaurant. So there's a theory that that's where the word restaurant came from, was from the restorative powers of onion soup. The onion soup that we have here in the US, the first time that it appeared on a menu was in New York City in 1869 at a French restaurant. And it really became popular in the 1960s when there was a lot of interest here in the States for French cooking which probably could be attributed to one of my favorites, Julia Child, also known as the French chef, who had her television show on public television in the 60s after publishing her uh, cookbook, um, the, the French Cooking Cookbook, which I'm blanking on the name at the moment. And I wanna check to see again if anybody has any questions um, before I go on. As I mentioned, I'm not actually gonna be cooking this today. I prepared it last night, but I am gonna tell you how you would do it. You would take your julienne onion, you know, your onion sticks, melt butter <clears throat> in a big pan that's, that's heavy, so it's a heavy metal so you can be cooking it at a low temperature for a long time. Once the butter is melted, you put the onions in, add a little bit of salt and pepper, 
and you stir them every now and then. They're going to cook probably for about 45 minutes to get a nice caramel color. And that's the caramelization, which is bringing out the sugars as well as browning and softening the onions. <clears throat> At that point, you're going to be adding a little bit of flour to the onions and the uh, white wine and then a little bit of the beef stock. And typically in an onion soup, you would have more beef stock than I've used in this recipe because this recipe is actually a casserole. And at that point, after the onions are cooked and they have the flour and they're thickened a little bit, it gets put into a casserole dish. And then we take our croutons, which were pre-made from the store, and layer those on top. And then we put the cheese on top of that and bake it until the cheese is, is melted. And if you want the cheese to be brown and bubbly the way you may have had it in a restaurant, then you could run it under the broiler. Or if you have um, one of the blowtorch things, you could brulee it that way. And I have one that's heated up. I'm going to pull it out. I wanted to mention, um, Rich and I bought an air fryer about a year ago. And we have fried a couple things in it. But what I really like it for is for reheating things. It's a, a great tool for reheating things. And even if you're using the cinnamon rolls that come in the tube at the store, they cook really quickly in there. So don't not use your air fryer. It's a great thing for reheating. So I'm going to pull this out of here. Smells fabulous. So onion soups, you could either do it in um, a casserole dish like this, or I'm sorry, a lot bigger casserole dish that would be shared family style, or this casserole can be done in an individual dish like this. Typically onion soup is done in individual dishes that are flame proof and oven proof so that they can be heated up in the oven. But you can see I've got my soft onions in the bottom, I've got my cheese melted on top of the croutons. And the croutons, when they are sitting on the liquid of the onion or the onion soup, they actually absorb a little bit of the water. And it's a really nice textural contrast because you've got the soft onions and then you've got the bread, which may still have a little crunch, but it's soaked up some of the liquid. And then you've got the melty cheese. All in all, it's a rich dish that's not expensive to prepare, not difficult to prepare, and very, very tasty. And I think uh, everybody in my family loves onion soup, similar to Anthony Catrino, and likes to uh, taste it when they go to different restaurants. And I hope that you'll give this a try. As we're getting into the cooler months here, I really do think that this would be a great side dish to have with any kind of a fall or winter dinner. And so for today, that is it from Joan's Kitchen. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Ciao for now.